Welcome to Puddle! In this update, we're gonna tackle the third chapter of the game, the laboratory. In the end of the last chapter, we had this huge overgrown plant which decided to turn on this valve and unleash all of this hydrocarbon solution in this beaker. We're going to take it for a ride! First of all, I'll showcase the retard way of doing this level, but it is so fun because you can rush forward like a crazy madman with no worry in the world. Uh, oh god, there are lots of worries when you're doing it this way. Yeah, for some reason, all of the table into the laboratory is filled with fire, so I really don't know what this guy is trying to achieve, except maybe setting his entire lab on fire because our solution appears to be really inflammable. So now we're gonna play this level the way it is meant to be played. And yet, those test tubes are really dangerous because even when they're slowly spinning around, they can still knock your beaker all over the place. Yeah, you're supposed to go slow whenever you're taking those turns and all of this, but I just find that doing it with high speed is a lot more convenient for you to do. And yeah, don't underestimate those platforms, they can be tricky, but the thing is, they don't really tilt all that often, so usually you'll be in the clear- ah! These test tubes get in the way even when they're not moving. How about that? <laughs> I knock you out of the way, you useless test tube. Uh, oops. We better get out of the way. That red light is bad news. So you might think that we've done all of this for nothing, considering that we avoided setting our liquid on fire for absolutely no reason, but yeah, we just have to extinguish it here at the end of the level. So, while we're waiting for the level to hand, I might as well just go right out and say that for me, this was the one chapter of the game where everything clicked for me. This was the one chapter which made me go, okay, this game is really, really great. There's some pretty good variety in the stages that we see in this world, and also the gimmicks are pretty appealing. So, I'm gonna do this level again mainly in order to manage to do the retard run properly by simply rushing forward and, yeah. We just set the entire lab on fire. Yeah, I lost so well that I had the triumphant fanfare at the end. Uh, oh shit, uh, okay, uh, I think I'm still good, maybe? No, uh... <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, I think this is my favorite level in the entire game right here. Just because I'm a sucker for all of this quirky entertainment. So there are two parts in the level that are really hard to go through when you're doing this level at a rush. The first one being the test tubes, the second one being this part. Yeah, I was really lucky here because usually when you get to this one part, your beaker will hit the floor that is strangely bumpy and then your entire liquid will spill over and will die. But here we go, we've managed to do the successful Moron Run properly. Honestly, I had my mind blown when I figured out that doing this in this level was possible. I don't think the designers wanted you to do this that way, considering that, well, the part-time is pretty much out of the scale, but hey, we'll take that. And you can sort of do this on extreme as well, but it'll be a whole lot harder. We'll talk about it a little bit more later. But right now, let's go to the second level before I spend like 15 minutes on the first stage over and over again. Lasers and beakers! The main theme for the rest of this video will be buttons. There are plenty of buttons to push into this level and the other level that will come right after. At least these are pretty easy to push, but you don't have any time to waste because Otherwise, the elevator will bring you forward to your doom in the lasers. This button will also trigger the other platform- uh, Oh shit, I really was way too late on this one. There's gonna be absolutely no saving grace for us here. <laughs> ah, but I got some liquid in, that's gonna count for something, right? Uh, well, it would if the gate will open, but unfortunately my liquid all melted away. You really have to not waste any time whenever you're hitting the final button in the vertical elevator stretch, because if you hacked way too late, you've seen what happens. So let's do it again with a little bit less stupid this time around. The music for this part of the laboratory is at the same time pretty calming, but really unsettling at the same time, but 
That's pretty much on par on the course considering that the laboratory is filled with a lot of insane death traps and moving platforms and flamethrowers everywhere. Uh oh. Yeah, I really shouldn't have done what I just did right here. Normally, you take the ride really slowly on the moving platform in order to get to the extinguisher, and then you gently tilt the screen in order to make the beaker fall on the switch, which will turn off the fire, but now our entire liquid is on fire because, obviously, since the liquid is inflammable, the entire fire will spread. Oh my god, are we going to make it in time to the exit? Oh my god, I really cannot believe it. I really do not deserve this victory at all. That was way too close. Hoo wee! Taste the spoil of victory for the eternally stupid. So our liquid is finally free from the beaker. We're gonna see many more adventures with our petroleum or oil. All of this pressure is gonna make us escape out of this bottle. Alright, that'll do it for all of our liquid. So, it's now time to deal with the obstacles that we've dealt with in the last two levels, but with freeform liquid. This part is especially fiendish, and you must not touch the upper row of lasers because as you might have seen in the previous level, if one bit of your liquid will be set on fire, all of it will follow suit. And this is a rather lengthy level, so you cannot afford to touch this upper laser, because otherwise you are done for. And now it's time to do a graceful leap for this other switch that we have right here. Yeah, we cannot press the switch this way, we're gonna have to do the entire turnabout in order to be able to do it. Yeah, whenever you're hitting this switch, just tilt the screen to the right at the last minute in order to properly orient your liquid for the switch. This will allow you to press the switch a whole lot easier. And now we're gonna have to go through a ring of fire. This one is pretty much all about timing. You just go whenever the flames die. And don't dilly-dally around because you don't really have a whole lot of time handy. Here we go, that really wasn't all that hard. And now the only things that separate us from victory is this one switch right here. Yeah, this flame is really not much of an issue to avoid. Just tilt the screen whenever you see it ahead. And there we go! As long as I'm around, there's not gonna be any of this liquid which will be set on fire. Ah, come on! Way to make me into a liar, game! But no, that's the next step of our petroleum. It's gonna evolve in order to become something magnificent. But we're gonna have to wait until the next video in order to see what we're gonna be playing as. In the meantime, let's go look at the extreme difficulty changes in the last three levels that we just played. The main change that you'll see in this level is in the way that the platforms tilt and also their frequency. Not only the platforms go down a whole lot more, but they do it at much frequent intervals, so it's kinda impossible to rush through this section. Just in case that you found the elevator sequence to be rather tedious in level 2, well good news, extreme difficulty solves this issue because the buttons are now a whole lot harder to press because yeah, you can see that they've got slight of a resistance to them. Whenever you'll be pressing off them, you can see that they actually make your jar bounce all over the place. As for this section, you can see that the flamethrowers move around a whole lot more, so It'll be trickier to get through this part without setting your liquid on fire. Okay, maybe I just did right here. And at the same time you manage to see how you properly do this section. As for level 3, once again, the switches are harder to press. Yeah, I sent my entire liquid spread all on the switch and yet I failed to press it because it was too heavy. And it looks like we're gonna have to try it again! Yeah, whenever your liquid gets sent upward like that, it looks like some sort of giant tentacle. Ah, once again I press the button the wrong way, so... Here we go, the second part of this level has another twist added to it. The flamethrowers here are a whole lot more fiendish because the interval at which they light off and light on again is much shorter, so there's no time to waste. I started to leave a whole lot faster and yet I barely made it. So that's it for this update. In the next video, 
we're gonna blow some stuff up. <laughs>